I love the plants. I love the farmers. I love the people. It's just, uh, yeah, I kind of, kind of love it all, really. I love, I love the ticklers. I don't know what I'd be doing without it. It's hard. That's another thing that sometimes gets you, isn't it? It's like, well, what would I do? <laughs> this is The Producers. I'm Anthony Huckstep. After building a career in the hospitality sector, Jordan Sly had a yearning for a greater connection to produce. He set himself a mission to grow the best quality organic seedlings, and he's now become one of the most important parts in the organic food chain on the east coast of Australia. So Worm Tickles is obviously the uh, the world famous organic nursery. Started in Sydney, designed to to provide seedlings. Well, what something that we we're into. I never thought of you know just sort of starting this thing, but it was something that I was obviously very passionate about and providing quality tools for you guys to grow organic seedlings at home and then working with farmers and expanding through that and moving to Byron has been great, but it's just a, a great little family, small boutique nursery growing some uh, some wicked seedlings, basically. Well, that's, uh, they're, they're two great regions, of course. One's just on the outskirts, 30 minutes out of the centre of the CBD in Sydney, so it's a great location for a massive amount of people hopefully to inspire to grow food and, and deliver quality food too. And then, of course, Byron, you've got a lot of Obviously, a beautiful climate, a beautiful, beautiful sort of segmentation of community and um, great conditions. And also, a lot of people are sort of stepping away into that real sustainable sort of growing at home, market gardening, bartering, trading, and, and all of that. So, the great regions that suit worm ticklers to a T, really. Jordan's connection to the land started at a young age and has been the foundation of his food ethos ever since. I didn't get much of a sort of upbringing at home, but I did learn to grow food with my grandfather at a young age. So he, he was from sort of Riverina, country boy. And so I, he, we had a pretty serious veggie patch. Well, he had a pretty serious veggie patch in Campbell. And then, as you said, I went into the hospitality. I was just very lucky, and I'm sure a friend of yours, a friend of mine, but Sean and Manor from Sean's Panorama, he took me on uh, when I was a young young drummer in sort of probably 2003 or something. I worked for a year and a half for him as, as his baker. But, but part of that rest, part of that role was that I sort of accepted the uh, the deliveries in the daytime and, you know, stuff was coming in that I'd just never heard of, you know, these radicos were coming in and all these stuff, broad beans, butter beans, and I'd never seen it. I was, you know, 21, 22, whatever it was. And it just really sort of, uh, that that's what sort of inspired a lot of the fresh produce and seeing that and understanding how he had such a small menu and how real it was and um, and how it changed so regularly and, and and stuff that he used that, you know, no one was using. I mean, I'm sure they were, but, you know, he was using nettle. And I'd sit there picking this nettle, you know, with gloves on, like, you know, just a book. It took forever. It was a nightmare of a job. But it was, you know, it just taught me a lot about that and it inspired me. And seeing guys like that sort of made me sort of get back into that sort of food, food-wise, and then and we'll produce and where, where it comes from and how to grow it. After moving out of Sydney to find a deeper meaning in life, Jordan started growing his own seedlings and it triggered a fascination in growing his own produce too. It all started just through a, through a, a, a drive and an interest in food actually. So I was working at a couple of great restaurants, playing music at the time and I took a little house up in the Blue Mountains to get out of out of the big smoke for a while to work out what I was doing and I simply covered a little garage with some plastic a couple of, and, and started growing some seedlings and then sort of without using the word of organically but it just kind of grew and it was that time sort of 10 years ago where people were looking at a bit more health and kale became a thing and other things sort of followed suit and farmers markets and there became this sort of connection I guess luckily by chance at the same time as I kind of was into that a lot of other people sort of into growing a bit of food at home and being a bit more sustainable so it was kind of just very humble beginnings and um and we still are very small but uh now we've got a couple of couple of sites and, uh, and we've grown a lot of seedlings and a lot of people have grown and eaten which is uh, very satisfying there were many times I had to look at myself and I was thinking mate well for one I didn't really know what I was doing and you know <laughs> I was just kind of learnt by failure and you know I took on this thing and I sort of like you do, you dive in pretty deep and, you know, obviously finances are, are a huge thing starting a business and we just sort of had a few seedlings. We do a couple of little markets and, you know, buy another tunnel if we made some money and you just sort of hit these hurdles along the way. But definitely that at the start, just sort of starting a business from nothing, um, you know, and then facing obviously the challenges became starting with the backyard kind of operation and then working out what to do with the business in a sense. So, you know, starting of it and then the sort of turning into actually a real thing that, well, to bottom line mean that actually could 
sustain some sort of income and be a business to start with. But the great thing there was the guys sort of, you know, the, 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 everyone jumping around me, wanting to wanting to do well and sort of growing for the farmers and getting that little chance, those little opportunities that small businesses sometimes get that sort of given the opportunity to, to expand. So it was sort of just the initial period of, of starting it and, and wondering if it was just madness. And then secondly was the um, – was the idea of actually getting a really good product behind us because that's what I knew it would come down to. And the main thing for me was having something that A, was organic, and then B, had no plastic. So we've never used any plastic pots or any of that sort of thing. So we started in a way that was very time-consuming and labour-consuming, mixing our own mixes and all that sort of stuff. And that's what kind of happens when you start a business and you can't quite afford to get to the next level where you can have all your soil delivered and all that sort of thing. But it was basically just a lot of greens and, and just trying to step away from in an industry, which I still find is a little bit sort of, not older, but a little bit sort of, you know, it, it's just sort of stuck in its way. So sort of just trying to break the mould of like, why can't we just do this a different way so that it's easier, better for the environment and a bit more fun. As his business grew, an opportunity to supply seedlings to farmers, work with known chefs and a bit of TV work too, allowed Jordan the chance to let his business grow organically. Yeah, well, I mean, a big turning point was for me when the farm approached me to join them, I guess, and that was only about four years ago. But prior to that, there was a couple of little carrots. You'd also, something good would happen. Someone, you know, a chef would be interested in you or um, I won a couple of little awards. But then it was basically kind of, you know, then I got some sort of, a little bit of profile. It was just, again, because it was an interesting little space and people were a bit more interested in it. So I think sort of, Working with Marty Boetz on the Cooks Co-op and getting a bit of TV stuff with the Today Show and just a few little bits and pieces that maybe, you know, people think, ah, oh, cool, I think this is a cool little business and they, you know, it might actually be a little thing, you know. It's kind of, it really was that small at the time, so. The breadth and depth of his range these days is dependent on location and the local clientele. Well, these days we love to do a lot. Well, again, that's, that's an interesting question in itself because different sort of genres and areas of, of even on Sydney alone, different markets, Northern Beaches versus North Sydney versus Coach, sort of it's a, it is a different clientele. So it's, we really try and have a broad range. I know that sort of people in Mossman or et cetera, I don't mean to, you know, stereotype or whatever, but they, you know, flowers might sell better there and someone might have a bit more land up in the Northern Beaches, so veg will be doing better there. Here in Byron, you know, we, we do a lot of medicinals and we like to have sort of a, quite a large range and you calendulas and wormwoods and echinaceas and all this sort of stuff and a lot of sort of naturopaths and families will grow that sort of stuff so it's really quite broad and varies demographically if you will so we, we grow a couple of different different methods there's, there's cuttings where you take a cutting from a stock plant and obviously then there's growing from seed which we primarily do so direct seeding but again what i kind of learned and the, and the example to give is that just don't really cut the corners, you know. Use the best seed. We've always made it our, our purpose to have, you know, get a really good soil mix so that we're sort of looking after our irrigation and just doing those simple things right. I think that's kind of like what sort of artisans kind of do in a way when you look at the great, you know, people grinding their own flowers and the yeast. And I've always sort of associated with baking in a little while. It's just like when you get the recipe right and you don't sort of cut any corners, you, um, you sort of get the results that you're looking for. And what we're looking for really is consistency and just uh, – just even growth and, and, and throughout the seasons and working with the cooler and warmer months because obviously that's sort of with the, the timing thing with, um, with with germination as well as the shorter days and all that sort of stuff, Huck, so that kind of comes into it. But really just keeping it simple from the start and using good inputs is, is what I've learned really works. Jordan's client base ranges from commercial organic farmers all the way to home gardeners keen to put their hands in the soil. Um, well, a lot, lot, lot go direct to the to the public, you know, from markets uh, and also through the retail that we stock in shops. We sell a little bit online. But then uh, what, what we do love as well is growing for, uh, for a couple of our favourite sort of farmers around the Sydney Basin. So sort of the Currawong guys and the Block 11 guys. And so they, we, we grow sort of mass amounts of stuff for them to then grow on and they would sell as full produce. And those guys have just been super supportive and they're the ones I've really got to thank, really, that, that community around there. But they, that's, a, you know, I was talking to, to Farmer Greg today and we're, we've got a bunch of onions, red onions coming through him at the moment, some kale, some beetroot and some fennel. So just sort of moving with the seasons again. Um, Currawong like a lot of lettuce from us. You know, they love the salanovas and the pickagans. And, and again, those guys all have different climates as well. So they can kind of do some sort of stuff themselves from seed at different times of the year, and then they rely on us at different different, different times as well. Jordan believes that building connections lies at the very heart of any success Worm Ticklers has had, and it's been the key 
to expanding to the Byron region too? Uh, look, I run around, I fly around, I'm sort of up and down from Sydney a bit, really enjoying it up here. And, and what I have found is spending more time up here from the last year was just, again, making those connections, which do take time in this sort of farming world. And you can't kind of bounce into the farm and bounce in from Sydney going, I'm the greatest seed and grow in the world. And, you know, everyone's got to buy from me. It kind of, you know, you've got to, you know, build those connections and people see you see you working hard and see you sort of there every day and and you get to know them and their families and so that sort of helps but the, the, but the two today I, I was just in the shop um, which is great so with the people had a look at the tunnel I just flew back from Sydney yesterday afternoon uh, but we had a really big weekend down there which was a whole bunch of packing markets and training staff and it's pretty go 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 a lot of the time actually to be honest especially with the, uh, the last couple of years to deal with but um Look, can't complain it, but it's nice to be up here for a, for a week now, enjoying that. This is my favourite time of year coming in, to be honest, because it's just up here. And I, I was going to bounce to this before, but it's, so when I first came up to Byron up here to the farm, it's like the climate, even only being eight hours away or whatever it is, it's so different. And so I'd signed this lease and I was here and I was pumped up and I was ready to go and I'm in the farm and all the rest of it. And then the first, I started in December. <laughs> And then the January came and I was planting the house down. I was going to, you know, make a million bucks and all the rest of it. And I couldn't grow anything. It was too hot. It was like I didn't know what I was doing. So I lost, fully lost my mojo, you know. But it was just the time of year. So now that it's cooling off down here, I really love getting into just the greens. And I just I just love growing, you know, as boring as it might sound, just rockets and nailing, you know, beautiful radicchios and the endives and the sorrels and, you know, beautiful broccolinis and I love seeing people grow them and you know because we have the best seeds and the best sort of the, the thing they, they, this, they can't believe they've actually managed to grow a cauliflower you know what I mean like a perfect cauliflower at home and it's just so I do like the cool season stuff it's also easier to work in that sort of temperature outside but that's that's what we love we love doing mass trays of just that beautiful coloured spinach flowers for a couple of flowers growers we grow for but definitely all those green lines I like yeah COVID-19 has had a huge impact on those working in the food chain, and Jordan is no different. But the experience has taught him to be a better business person. It's been a pretty pretty fiery couple of years, really, so it's like, it hasn't changed me a lot as a person. I still love what I love, and I'm, I'm all of that, but it's, it's definitely sort of changed. For me, I've had to sort of learn a lot of different skills from being sort of very happy-go-lucky. I've had to be expanded, and with expanded, there becomes... You know, a lot of talk about money and a lot of talk with accountants and a lot of talk with managing staff. And so that's that's how it has changed me, um, and, and for better or for worse. But that's just what happens when you run a business and you, and you just you just got to work. And I've always been a worker, so there's been no problem there. But I think just, just you know, I don't want to call it stress or whatever it is, but it's just, you know, there's, there's something there. But, you know, for 99% of the time, it's just so rewarding and so fun. And so and you've got to do something, don't you, Huck? So get out there and have a go. <laughs> As one of the leading seedling growers in the country, Jordan believes no matter what you are growing, it's all about the ecosystem you are creating. One thing we sort of ham on about is that what you will see from us any time of year is what, what is to be planted then. We don't, we don't try and pull the wool over the guys. We can't shit ourselves because we're not sort of using chemicals and, and grow lights and heat mats and all of that. So if we can grow it, you can grow it. So basically whatever's in front of you, but I've, I've always a big fan of trying something different nailing your herbs you know the stuff you're using is, is a big one that we sort of people people to use uh, to grow what they're using and don't forget about a few lovely flowers and just just to fill it out so you can sort of see yourself that you're creating a little bit of an ecosystem at home no matter how big or small you can do it with a couple of pots or you can do it with a with a tennis court trans, transformed but uh just to just have some fun with it make sure they're in the sun and the water i know it gets back to that basic sort of stuff but you know ask the questions make the mistakes and and, and power on is the, is the advice I always give. And and, you, and it's enjoyable. That's the thing. You just 15 minutes a day, you're out there, mate. You're checking it out, what's going on out here. And then you're reaping the rewards. And it's a great way to, to boost your own morale and, and, and action. And then also great for the family and, and friends. Off the back of his success, Jordan is looking to new avenues to spread the word on growing organic produce. I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready to sort of... You know, I, I, I want to do a couple more little shops. I think that, um, you know, the idea of how the farm works, having the tunnel on site there and the shop and then having farmers on site that I can grow for, that grow for a restaurant that's right there, that's the reason I wanted to join the farm and get involved in that because that's, you know, a closed cycle and, and I think a world-class model if, if nailed. 
And I think that there's there's room for everyone. We get contacted for people who want our seedlings. So it's like, you know, can we do one in Tassie or can we do one in Newcastle? Can we do one here? So I think a little bit more expansion and then maybe some, some nice retail stuff, you know, getting in, in, in line with one of the sort of nice grocers and brand alignment with worm tickles and where it's at with those sort of peers. We love, we love markets and all that sort of stuff, of course. But I think a couple more shops. And I want to do further education stuff. So I just, you know, especially up here at the farm, I think a lot of people, or in Byron in general and the surrounding areas, people sort of move to the area for a reason or they do have a bit more land and they kind of want to learn this stuff. Like, like, look, people are actually interested in what I do because it's, you know, obviously it is growing food and it's, it's got that sort of huge underlying importance. But they just it's hard to get the information. I just think I should want to share this and, and, and get everyone doing that because it's, you know, that, that's that's what it's all about. Was it what it was all about from the int- from the start, and then I think it's still a very important message to pass on now. Forget the wiggles, the worm ticklers, a kids show getting them enthused about growing food are the next big thing in kids entertainment. Yeah, so we've uh, we've actually got some exciting news of we're playing the the kids zone splendor this year. I've been working with one of my musical mates on a on a worm tickler show for years now and it's sort of been on and off and on and off but uh, we're, we're headlining we've got the guys out there. We've got you know Roy Aubergine and his lads out there. I think Rob knows a little bit about this. But uh, it's, it's good to go. It's like the Smurfs meets uh, meets worm tickles meets the wiggles really. So excited about that. And again that's just about fun and you know People planting seeds and just getting out there with a with a with a good message and kindness. Well, we've got twenty songs. My mate Elliot from the Delta Rigs. We've been writing together for years, and it's it's actually really quite funny, yeah. <laughs> but clever as well. So that, that's exciting as well. You just got to do something. As I said, it's been ten years, and it's like you know, I, I love seedlings. I always will love seedlings. But you know, there's just how do you what do you keep doing? How do you keep your mind away from you know? <laughs> paying people on zero and all the rest of it. <laughs> You're going to actually love it. <laughs> Come up. <laughs> For Jordan, it's all about the next generation, seeing the enthusiasm of kids embracing nature and putting their hands in the soil makes it worth it well look I, lo- I love the kids like i get the kids coming into the store here kids going to the markets and they've so- literally saved their pocket money and they just charge in and they want to buy a, an asturtium or a you know a flower or what radish seeds and they, they legitimately want to spend their money you know on seedlings and that to me is just the best you know those, those little guys are just rad and that is the future and i've just you know and now a couple of them work for me and i've known them for you know 10 years from the markets and now they're working for me in Sydney. So that's super rewarding and it's, it really is. Makes you feel like it's a little family, which is what you want. And um, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's very pleasing, very pleasing. So many friends made through markets and through farming and through restaurants, as you know, mate. And uh, you know, that, that, that's real stuff. I love the plants. I love the farmers. I love the people. It's just, uh, yeah, I kind of, kind of love it all, really. I love, I love the ticklers. I don't know what I'd be doing without it. It's hard. That's another thing that sometimes gets you, isn't it? It's like, well, what would I do? <laughs> Might get back on the drums, Huck. What are you doing, eh? <laughs> From home gardener to one of Australia's leading organic seedling producers, Jordan Sly has created something quite special on the east coast of Australia. But he's only just getting started if the Worm Ticklers Kids Show has anything to do with it. This is The Producers, a Deep in the Weeds production. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we share the stories of producers, farmers, makers and growers, the true lifeblood of the food industry. Follow us on Instagram at Producers Podcast or email us at producerspodcast at deepintheweeds.com.au.